training our 15 meetings in their super seminar. And uh, thank you for Joanna Romeo for joining us and accept the invitation to have a talk for today. Thank you very much to you for the invitation. Thank you very much. Let me share this screen. Okay. Is my screen visible right now? Sure, looks good. Thank you. Thank you, Rivera. Okay. First of all, we have a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the land of the Omnirumian Networks head office is located on York University. We recognize that many indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campus are located that precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many indigenous nations. The area known as Kitarato has been caretaken by Anishibek nations. The Hutsian Confederacy and Turon Wendat. It is now home to many First Nations, Unit and Metis communities. Uh, we acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of Credit Nations, the Credit First Nations. The territory is subject of the dish with one spoon, Vampon Belt, Conwent, and agreements to peacefully share and care of uh, Great Lake regions. Uh, the Omni Reunion Super Seminar Series welcome faculty members, Omni Reunion affiliates, and highly qualified personnel, including postdoctoral researchers, graduate students, to showcase their research, promote their ideas, share their research experience, and establish connection among the various branches of the network. It is a platform to spread scientific knowledge about the One Health Research Framework and the research progress of uh, over 30 million uh, HQPs within the network scientific research community. This seminar facilitates knowledge exchange within the Omnirunion, the emergence, uh, emerging infectious disease modeling network, and the collaborating scientific community. And we are happy that for today we have Dr. Johanna Romero Layton. Uh, she accepts our invitation. Uh, Dr. Johanna Romo Layton holds a PhD in mathematics with expertise in mathematical biology, applied statistics, data visualization, and extensive research experience in mathematical modeling of public health, ecological, and environmental problems. Her research interests include vector borne diseases, antimicrobial resistance, time series analysis for fissures, and population ecology. Welcome. Uh, Dr. Johanna Romero, nice to have you, Thank you. Uh, for the talk today. Uh, she's going to talk about a mathematical modeling of first HIV and Zika co-infection case in Colombia and Brazil uh, to investigate the co-infection with HIV and Zika, where the first cases were reported in 2015 and 2016. The model considers the sexual transition dynamics of both viruses and vector host interaction. The model also considers the impact of intervention strategies such as personal protection, uh, antiviral therapy, and sexual protection. Okay, let's uh, have uh, the available parameters and go to the details by hearing from her. Let me stop sharing. Thank you all for joining us. Can you share, Professor? Okay, yeah, great. It is all visible. Okay. Dr. Can you see my Romero. screen? Yeah, yeah. Your screen is visible, Dr. Johanna Romero. Okay, perfect. Thank you for the presentation. And my today, pleasure. today I'm going to talk about an interesting topic in public health which is the co-infection between two important virus, HIV and CAKP. Uh, 
this work uh, was done in collaboration with my supervisors, Professor Julian Arino from University of Manitoba, uh, Professor Bushra Nasri from University of Montreal, and Idris Sekak is a postdoctoral fellow from University of Montreal. Uh, before to start, I'm going to give you a brief description about the biological problem uh, involved in this study. Um, Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, and Zika virus, CHIV, uh, are considered with two major public concerns about the world, but particularly in Latin America and Caribbean countries, because the climatic condition in those countries uh, help to the spread of both viruses. HIV is a chronic infection that attacks the immune system, whereas CHIV is transmitted by the mosquitoes and can even cause a congenital malformation in babies where, where the pregnant woman is infected during pregnancy. Uh, that uh, mal congenital malformation are, for example, the Guillain-Barré syndrome and also microcephaly. Uh, in spirit, HIV is not a zoonotic disease. Both virus HIV and CHIV can be transmitted through the sexual contact and also by through vertically. That means uh, from mother to fetus. Uh, in this figure, uh, we can see uh, the human infected with both virus uh, simultaneously. Uh, I can say that around the world, there are few cases uh, reported uh, with this co-infection uh, in individuals. Uh, actually, the first two recorded cases were confirmed in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil in 2016. It was a 30 years old patient and also a pregnant woman. In the case of the pregnant uh, woman, the fetus exhibits significant abnormalities in uh, its organism and finally its diet. In 2018, uh, in Colombia, were reported uh, five cases of disco infection. Uh, but until now, I can say that there, there are no many cases around the world, but the implication of disco infection, uh, particularly in babies, it's uh, really a uh, a serious problem in public health. Uh, in this figure, uh, we can see the appearance of a baby uh, which has a microcephaly. Microcephaly caused by the infection with CHIV. Um, until now, the question, the question remains unanswered if HIV infection increased the probability of contracting CHIV, or on the contrary, CHIV infection could worsen the infection uh, caused by HIV, particularly during pregnancy. Nevertheless, uh, some laboratory studies have revealed that CHIV has the potential to facilitate the propagation of HIV by promoting the replication of this virus. Uh, this biological and public health problem has been uh, studied from different point of views, but from the mathematical point of view, there is no evidence of mathematical modeling uh, models studying this phenomenon in the, in the literature. The, that is why uh, the analysis of the model that we propose in this work uh, expect to identify important transmission factors that will help to design and evaluate different control and prevention strategies to minimize the impact of this infection in public health. Uh, in order to, to formulate our mathematical model, we consider uh, some hypotheses or some assumptions. The first one is the, the model uh, examines two distinct groups. The first group is the human population, we just call it the host population. And the second one is the mosquito population, we just call it vector population. We are also assume that an individual who is susceptible to either disease cannot be infected with both diseases simultaneously at the same time. 
Uh, additionally, uh, we use a system of nonlinear ordinary differential equation involving some variables and some parameters. In this table, uh, we can see the variables involved in our mathematical model. And in this table, uh, we can see the parameters involved in our mathematical model. But in order to better understand the mathematical model, uh, this figure show the interaction between, uh, two, the, between the two populations uh, involved in our mathematical model. For example, here we can see the host population or human population, and here the vector population. Uh, the host population is divided uh, into some compartments, the susceptible human population, people infected with CHIV only, people infected with HIV only, and also people infected with both virus simultaneously. We also assume that people infected with CHIV become recovered, whereas people infected with HIV is not recovered. Uh, additionally, people infected with HIV become AID's carrier. For the vector population, uh, we consider two compartments, uh, susceptible mosquitoes and also infected mosquitoes. Uh, with those compartments, uh, we formulate a system of nonlinear ordinary differential equations. In order to analyze theoretical, theoretical or model, uh, we divide uh, this analysis into three uh, principal parts. In the first part, we consider the HIV-only model. In this model, uh, people infected with CHIV is zero. Uh, for this model, we define a region of interest biological, uh, is the region omega. And by using, the, by using mathematical tools, we compute the basic reproduction number for, uh, for the HIV model. Uh, using the theory, the, qual the dynamical system theory for ordinary differential equation, we prove the existence of two equilibrium points, the disease-free equilibrium point and the endemic equilibrium point. We uh, could prove the global and local uh, asymptotic stability of both equilibrium points. Similarly, uh, we consider the CHIV only model. In this model, uh, people infected with HIV is zero. And similarly than the previous model, we could determine a region of interest biological for this uh, model. And also we compute the basic reproduction number. Uh, to, in difference with the previous model, in this model, the basic reproduction number has a two parts. The first part is the basic reproduction number associated to the sexual transmission of the disease, because remember that we are considered that the, CA, the CAKB is not only transmitted tra uh, through the bit of mosquito, but also through sexual contact. And in red, uh, we have the basic reproduction number associated to the vectorial uh, transmission. Uh, similarly, uh, we could determine two equilibrium points uh, for this model, the disease-free equilibrium and the uh, endemic equilibrium. I'm using the same tools that uh, the, of dynamical system, we could prove the uh, local and global asymptotic stability of those of both equilibrium points. Once uh, the analysis of both of both models separately was done, we analyze the co-infection uh, mathematical model. Uh, in this case, uh, we could determine a region of interest biological for the problem and we could determine the explicit coordinates of the disease-free equilibrium. But the explicit coordinates for the endemic equilibrium uh, was not determined, but we could determine the, the conditions of existence of that uh, endemic equilibrium point. Uh, given that we previously defined the basic reproduction number for the HIV-only model and the CHIV-only model, in this case, the basic reproduction number is the maximum between uh, both uh, basic reproduction number. Uh, in this case, 
RH is the basic reproduction number for the HIV only model, whereas uh, the R zeta in color blue is the basic reproduction number for the CAKB only model. Uh, under certain conditions for this threshold, we could determine the local asymptotic stability of the, the disease free equilibrium. Uh, once the theoretical analysis of this model was done, we implement uh, some control strategies in order to uh, in order to control the spread of this infection. For this end, uh, we introduce three uh, control strategies. The first one, ETA one, is the implementation of personal protection. For example, the use of repellents, uh, the use of mosquito bedness. Uh, the use of mosquito uh, bedness in pregnant with insecticides. Uh, ETA2 is the use of antiretroviral therapy. Uh, this therapy avoid the, the, the pass from people infected with HIV to people uh, AID carrier. And ETA3, ETA3 is the preventive sexual contact, uh, for example, by the use of condoms. Uh, given that we are, formul we are uh, formulating an optimal control problem, we define a cost function uh, which has to be minimized. This cost function is defined by, uh, through uh, J eta uh, in, is in this equation. And we had to put some uh, assumptions for uh, these control uh, variables in order to uh, guarantee that that control stay in a control uh, in a set of admissible controls. Um, once the, the theoretical analysis of this control problem was done, uh, we used some values of, for the parameters in Colombia and Brazil in order to, to validate our mathematical problem. Uh, for this end, I can say that during 2015 and 2016, Brazil and Colombia uh, experienced an alarming CAKB occurrence involving some cases of disco infection. But uh, due to the lack of temporal records for disco infected people, it was not possible to estimate the parameters of the model. But we use some av available uh, values, uh, parameters values in the literature in order to state a range for the parameters values um, uh, uses from previous research. Uh, we also assume that uh, Colombia and Brazil share some common parameters because the mathematical model is the same for both countries except for those value by parameters values related to the country population and the size of the initial conditions. Uh, in this table, we can see the initial conditions for uh, all the variables involved in our mathematical model. Uh, this, this population size corresponds to the number of people in 2016 in both uh, countries. Uh, in, in our first numerical experiment, we could determine the basic reproduction number for both countries. In this case, uh, we have the maximum uh, basic reproduction number in both Colombia and Brazil, and also the minimum value for the basic reproduction number in both countries as well. Uh, the red dot line represent uh, R0 equal to one, which is considered as a bifurcation uh, parameter in our model. Um, we also determine the normalized sensitive index indices uh, for the basic reproduction number, uh, uh, to all the parameters involved in their model. Uh, in this case, the blue, the blue bar uh, represent the indices of sensibility to the basic reproduction number associated to HIV 
For example, uh, here we can see the, that this basic reproduction number is more uh, sensible to the human death rate, which is represented through the letter mu, uh, followed by the infection uh, rate uh, of humans, uh, which is represented through the letter B, uh, beta H, and also the human recruitment uh, rate, which is represented through the letter lambda. In contrast, the basic reproduction number for the CAKB is more, which is represented through the bars uh, orange, is more sensitive, sensible to the mosquito DR rate, uh, the human recruitment rate, and also the human death rate. In this case, the road, the red dot line represents the sensitive equal indice, indice of sensibility equal to zero. Uh, in our Per ex numerical experiment, we could determine the a graphical representation of the disease-free equilibrium. In this case, the basic reproduction number is equal to 0 0.4719. Uh, and in this figure, we can see the solution uh, tend to the disease-free equilibrium in both countries. We could also determine a graphical representation for the endemic equilibrium point. In this case, for Colombia, the basic reproduction number is equal to 3.2338, and for Brazil, it's 3.2326. In this case, we can see that the solution of the system tend to the endemic equilibrium point. Uh, in this figure, we can see an interesting ex numerical experiment because we consider a variation of the co-infection probabilities, probabilities which in our model are defined through the letters omega-1 and omega-2. In this case, we consider that both probabilities are uh, have, have high values, medium values, and low values. Uh, in this figure, we can see that an increase in these probabilities about 0 0.01 leads to an increase in the density of co-infected individuals in both uh, Colombia and Brazil. Uh, finally, we activate uh, the three controls in order to see what happened with the solution of our system. Uh, in this case, uh, we can see how the control variables, uh, uh, what is the behavior of the control variables over time? Remember that eta one, which is represented through the line black in this figure represent personal protection. Eta two, which is represent in this figure uh, with color red represent uh, the antiretroviral therapy and eta three, which is represent through the line blue represent the use of condoms. In this figure, it's evident that the most important control is the use of personal protection because this is required at its full maximum value from the beginning of the campaign. Uh, in contrast, the control associated to antiretroviral therapy goes in three months to its maximum capacity, and ETA-3 maintains in low and constant level during the campaign. The time in this case was, was measured in days. Uh, in this figure, uh, we can see how the activation of the three controls simultaneously affect to mosquito population. In this case, uh, we can see with the activation of the three controls simultaneously in Colombia and Brazil, uh, reduce the infection uh, load. Uh, the, time, the time is also measured in days. And finally, uh, we combine uh, two controls simultaneously. In this case, uh, we can see the, the numerical experiment for the combination of ETA-1 and ETA-2 that is the combination of uh, personal protection and antiretroviral therapy. Uh, from uh, the, the control ETA-1 
eh, goes from zero, so from zero to its maximum balance, where the control for antiretroviral therapy remain constant. In both cases, eh, Colombia and Brazil, the increase of the personal protection did not play a significant role as the gradual increase of the antiretroviral therapy. Uh, here we can see the combination of ETA2 and ETA3, that is the combination of antiretroviral therapy and use of condoms. Um, in this case, we fix the control ETA2 and increase gradually ETA3, the use of condoms from zero to its maximum value, uh, which is one. In both cases, the simultaneous implementation of both controls redu reduce the number of co-infected individuals. Uh, but in this case, the condom use plays a more significant role in reducing the size of co-infected uh, people in both, in Colombia and Brazil. Okay, uh, once the result, the theoretical result and numerical result of this work was done, we can, I can give you some conclusions about this work. The first one is uh, Colombia and Brazil exhibit uh, similar trends in spreading and stabilizing uh, this uh, both virus with differences uh, primarily attributable to the population densities because uh, we know that Brazil has a high density of population than Colombia. In fact, uh, Brazil is greater than Colombia. Uh, another conclusion is an increase in the co-infection probabilities, uh, which uh, were denoted throughout the letters omega-1 and omega-2, led to a higher density of co-infected individuals in Colombia and Brazil. Uh, another conclusion is Individuals infected with CAKP demonstrated greater uh, variability in their behavior than those infected with uh, HIV. Uh, that is why, that is because uh, the Zika virus infection displays a diversity and um, fluctuation progression may be influenced by multiple external factors. For example, the environmental factors and so on. Uh, additionally, uh, another important conclusion is the most influential, influential control in the respective order are the use of personal protection, uh, number one, followed by the uh, use of antiretroviral therapy, number two, and finally the condom use. But the best strategy in order to reduce the number of people uh, co-infected with both virus is the combination of the three control uh, simultaneously. Uh, at the beginning of the presentation, I talk about the, the consequence of the co-infection in pregnant women. That is why a future world uh, plans to incorporate a compartments of women giving birth to babies with and without congenital malformations in order to understand how this co-infection affect uh, children. Uh, I want to acknowledge the support of the co-author of this work and also uh, to the One Health Modeling Network for Emergence uh, Disease, Mathematics for Public Health. Uh, and Okay, uh, if you are interested in in seeing the, uh, the result of this work. This work is available in archive, and this work it was also submitted to the Bulletin of Mathematical Biology, and right now is in under revision. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, here uh, you can see some uh, reference associated to, to the mathematical model that I present. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you very much for your interesting talk for the combination of two infections. Thank you. Let's see what questions may arise amongst the audience. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. If you are not convenient, 
with raising your hands, you can put your questions in the comments. I will read the com comments. Yeah, Joseph has a question. Yes, Joseph, please. Yes, Joanna, thanks for the talk. Really interesting. So I have a question. <clears throat> And so my question is, uh, yeah. So I think beginning the presentation, you talked about <laughs> no evidence about whether being infected with one of the diseases influences your chance of getting infection from the other. I don't know whether I'm, I'm getting that right. I think you talked about something like that. And so I was wondering, like, if we don't have enough evidence on whether being infected with maybe, I mean, if you are HIV patient, there's no evidence as to an increased chance of getting a Zika virus. Then why do we worry about modeling the co-infection? Like, I, I don't know whether my question is clear, like, because we don't have that evidence. So how do we do the co, the modeling, the co-infection? Uh, are you talking about uh, data? Yeah, so if, yeah, so, I mean, is there any data as to whether being infected with one mm -hmm. increases your chance or decreases your chance of getting infected with the other one? Like, is there any data or something to show that? I, I... Uh, yes, that, uh, that is an interesting uh, question because, in fact, as I mentioned previously, it, that was a, a, an important limitation in the world, the lack of data, because as uh, until now, there are few reported cases of disc infection around the world. Actually, the first uh, cases were reported in Brazil in 2016, I think two cases, and in Colombia, four cases in, 20, uh, in 2018, I think. So, after that, few cases of this infection has, uh, has been reported. That is why in order to validate our mathematical model, we use a core study, a cohort, a cohort study in Brazil, uh, which was done with a pregnant uh, woman infected with both virus simultaneously. Mm. So I can say that this, this is a big limitation of this problem. But the consequences in children of this infection are uh, severe. Mm -hmm. mm, I, see. I don't know if I answer your question. Yeah, good. Thank you. I have another question. If the, I mean, I'm allowed to. So the, the second question is: do, Did you consider consider seasonality in this model? Because I know that Zika virus. I mean, you pointed out clearly. It's a vector bond disease. And mm -hmm. most vector bond diseases are seasonal because of temperature and other factors that probably affect the vector. So, I mean, did your model consider seasonality or any other environmental factors in this because you are doing Zika virus? Uh, yes. I, I also mentioned that the CAK. CAKB virus uh, consider external uh, factors in order to spread the, the virus, uh, like uh, environmental factors, uh, weather factors, socioeconomical factors, <laughs> demographic factors, and, and so on. But in this model, we, uh, we did not consider those factors because uh, we, are, we are studying the infection uh, between a vector-borne disease and, and no vector borne disease, uh, which is HIV. If we if we study, for example, a co-infection between two vector borne diseases, for example, CAKB and dengue, or CAKB and chikungunya, for example, it's important to consider those external factors in the mathematical model. But in order to reduce uh, or mathematical uh, complexity. Mm. In this case, we did not consider uh, those factors, those external factors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, thank you. I have two more questions if I, there's time for me to 
ask. Thank you, Joseph, for your question. Thank you, Johanna, for the explanation and details. Is there anyone else who wants to share a comment, suggestion, or any kind of question? Yeah, uh, yeah, hi. <clears throat> yes, we have to offer you. Yeah, Joanna, Joanna uh, thanks for the nice work and presentation. Can you show me your model? <clears throat> model equations ah uh, in in these slides I, I don't have the the model equations okay it's, I, it's I present okay. this compartment model hmm. but but the questions are no linear ordinary differential equation okay in, okay it's okay it's, in it's this okay. graphical representation mm -hmm. uh you see, using your uh, flow chart, basically you are considering co-infection. So, 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 I, as I can see, you consider Zika uh, as a kind of sexual transmitted infectious diseases. Yes. Not really a vector diseases, huh? So, so the question is, uh, uh, for the transmission of the Zika virus, of course, this, this is mainly due to the bite of mosquitoes. So have you like uh, considered, because you, you see the, the infection through two routes. One is through the bite of mosquitoes, which is the wet bond disease. Mm -hmm. The other route is, through the sexual transmission, contact transmission. So I, I think it will be interesting because there are already so many modeling studies. Uh, for your study, it will make sense, for example, you compare the cases, for example, the total infection, because like eventually you will see how many, how many people infected, how, mm -hmm. how many people with HIV infected, basically, you know, the total infection with Zika virus, some of them get infection, some of them, they are HIV infected individuals. And then it, make, it will make sense to compare without the sexual transmitted route and with the sexual transmitted route, how much contribution from the STD if you treat it as sexual transmitted, comparing to without STD, you will you will be able to see how the HIV, you know, the sexual transmitted diseases route contributes to the total infection of Zika virus, right? Yes, yes, it is. It's a very interesting. Yeah, yeah, but it's, you see, the problem is really if you Google it, there, there are in fact thousands of papers starting of 2015 talking about the Zika virus, and some of the papers talk about treat the Zika virus as a you know sexual transmitted virus. Mm -hmm. So then there, in fact, there, there have been big debate about whether we should treat Zika virus as, as STD or, or vector-bound diseases. Mm -hmm. So this is, I, I think, because you only need to uh, compare, you see, with the sexual transmitted, without, and then you, you will see, uh, see, see, the, see, the, see how, uh, if you consider it as sexual transmitted diseases, how this contributes to the total infection. Yes, actually, in, in, in this world, uh, we did not do this uh, uh, contrast, this comparison. But uh, uh, as I mentioned at the end of the presentation about the uh, future work, uh, we are planning to incorporate uh, two additional compartments uh, to, women, uh, to women giving birth to babies with and without congenital malformation. This work is in progress. And in this world, we are planning to compare how the sexual transmission rate affect the total uh, uh, people infected with both virus simultaneously, as you are mentioning. 
Yeah, that is that is uh, good. Uh, so uh, related question, you have basic reproduction number in Brazil and Colombia. You show that slide. I see you have an estimation of the the estimation of the basic reproduction number. Mm -hmm. Can you show that page? Okay. The basic reproduction number for the co-infection? Yeah, for the co-infection. In, in the case of the co-infection, the basic reproduction number is the maximum. No, no, I, I see the real number, three point something. I see you have numerical result. Uh, here? Numerical. Ah, the, the, the numerical result, okay. The here not, or not, the... not this one, not the, you have a number which you 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 next page. Yeah, this is not here. So basically, you see, you have uncontrolled population behavior. Mm -hmm. So again, this is important. For example, you treat it as STD. And then because you control the population behavior, you're controlling the population behavior. So basically, you are controlling the human population. Mm -hmm. uh, you have R0 equal to these two numbers. Again, you see this, as I can see in your modeling, so you, you really over overemphasized uh, the transmission of the human root. Because like we uncontrolled, uncontrolled, you know that uh, for Zika virus in Brazil, usually the basic reproductive number is between 2.7 to, to 3.4. Mm -hmm. so that is in a range, you know, 2.7 and 3.4. This is typically, for example, like in Rio and in Sao Paulo, you know, in some places, they have estimated using the data. Anyway, there, there are some official numbers that is between 2.7 and 3.4. So here you estimated uncontrolled population because this is with population, mm -hmm. with human population. As you can imagine, if you remove, so this is, I believe there are some problems here. If you remove the human population and then this basic reproduction number, you know, due to the mosquito bite, as you can see, this part will be reduced. So this part, in fact, I, I think just you do not need to 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 set up set this. Anyway, I, I didn't see your, your paper, but this is this this uh, two numbers uh, sounds like strange uh, to me. So anyway, like this is. This could be a problem. So when you do the revision uh, before publication, you may want to, to pay attention to this, uh, to, to this part. OK. Uh, I have one more question. Uh, one more question. Yeah, I, I, I let others, if no other asks, so I, I will see to ask one more question. Yeah, let's see. I think there is no more question, Professor. Yeah, you can go on. I see a Professor Shangbing from uh, from uh, USA is participating from Alabama uh, Houseville. Huh? <laughs> So the other question is because I didn't see your model. You see, you you have uh, you have uh, HIV free equilibrium point. You have Zika free equilibrium point. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it is the case because like you have disease free. You only have one disease free, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how you construct your model. Because like usually in this case you have two population. Uh, you, you have one public, you have two virus. One is called HIV free, the other is called Zika free. Mm -hmm. And the third is both free. Do you have the third? Because like you know, 
in your model, if, if you have mosquito-free, HIV is the transmissible infectious uh, sexual uh, inf uh, inf infectious diseases, you will have uh, HIV-free equilibrium point, and then you have Zika-free equilibrium point, and you have both virus-free equilibrium points, but I see you only have one. Maybe because I do, do not see your model, you should check whether you have, you missed, or uh, basically, all depends on how you model the, the demographics of the population. Yes. So this part will also affect your, your outcome because like you have, you have mosquitoes, you have humans, you have human with HIV, you have human with Zika, mm -hmm. you have human infected with both. You know, this, this kind of population, the demographics of population itself, you see, it will make a difference to the outcome of the modeling. Mm -hmm. Because here, like, like do, do you see what I mean? You have disease free. You have two two virus. One virus, virus, virus free. The second virus free. Both virus free. At least you have you should have three virus free equilibrium state. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is a reminder. You you should check if this is the case. Because this, you should make the point. If you only have this free, uh, it seems you only have one disease free equilibrium point, Zika free, uh, then this would, you know, you are presenting one scenario because like disease free in both population. And then this scenario represents the Zika virus coming to the population and they started the transmission. So this is the disease, you see, you, you have EZ0. This disease free is, you have uh, the two non-zero numbers representing two population without virus. Now the virus coming, started to transmit. You In fact, what you are considering is following this scenario. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is because I didn't see that. This is the reason I was asking to 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 see if with you you can check with, with your model this part. Basically, you can make it specific. This refers to, you know, which scenario or which case you are you are considering. Okay. So anyway, it's it's, it's some interesting okay. work. Thank you for for, for presentation. No, thank you very much for your remarks. I will I will check carefully. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor, for more suggestions and comments. Thank you, Yana, for your answer and explanation. Is there any more questions? Mm, no, there is. <laughs> I have one more question, Yana. I really enjoyed your talk. Uh, when it comes to the case of co-infection, the thing that might first thing comes to the mind is the synergy effect of these infections. Uh, I see that you have two basic reproduction numbers and you compare them, you find the maximum. And there is the correlation term uh, where for the co-infection. Where is the synergy effect actually? I'm I'm going to share a screen my again. Share, sure, sure. Uh, here? Uh, it would be here, yes. Thank you. But uh, the, uh, what is the, the, the question, sorry? Uh, I said that uh, you have two infections at the same time. Yes. And which term shows the correlation of these infections? You know, you had two basic reproduction number and you compare them which one is the maximum based on that you go through your uh, argument um, in your reproduction number, which uh, which parameter or term shows the uh, the synergy shows that the situation in case you have one disease for getting the other disease, you, your situation will be worsened. You know. Okay, but I, I'm I'm going to uh, remark again. 
uh, we 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 first uh, determine the basic reproduction number associated to HIV, which is given in this equation. Right. Okay. Separately the, from the other disease. Yes, it's only for HIV. In this case, right. we are considered there are no people infected with CAKB. Yeah. In the second stage, uh, we determine uh, the basic reproduction number associated to CAKB only model. No people infected with HIV. In this case, the basic reproduction number uh, has two parts. The part associated to sexual transmission and the part associated to vectorial transmission. When we include uh, both infections uh, simultaneously, uh, people co-infected, the basic reproduction number is the maximum between uh, the basic reproduction number associated to HIV and the basic reproduction number associated to CAKB. But your question is about the correlation between between both yeah, of between them, right? Two. Right, right. As far as I understand, you compare them with each other. Yeah. Yes, I, I think in, in this case the there are many many parameters uh, involved in, right. involved in, in both of them. But I can say that the, the the most important parameters are the recruitment recruitment rate of humans, the mm -hmm. the ad rate of humans, and also the sexual the the parameter associated with, with the sexual transmission of the disease. Uh, I. I can I can say that about the 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 the, the most important parameters in in this basic reproduction number. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. No, thanks Thank to you, you for much. for your question. Thank you. Oh yeah, we have one more question from Joseph. Yes, Joseph. Yeah, I have one last question. If nobody is asking, so. Yeah, so you showed figures that represent the disease-free equilibrium and the endemic equilibrium. So, and they were they had the associated R zero values. And I was wondering, are those R zero values estimated from data, or the are values you assume to run the model? Uh, which parameters were assumed? Yeah, so you showed figures that illustrate the, the disease-free equilibrium and the endemic equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And each of these have the associated R0 values. And I'm mm -hmm. wondering whether those R0 values, I mean, in other words, the parameters you used to run the model were assumed values or they were estimated from data. Uh, no. Any any parameter was estimated through data because uh, we don't have a, a lot a, a lot of data for do that. That is why we could not do a parameters estimation of the model. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the parameters values available in the literature, in particular from the cohort study in pregnant women to get uh, those data for the figures. But it, you can see in in this table I have a list of all parameters involved in the model. For each parameter, it was associated a, a range of parameter values with the minimum and the maximum value for each parameter, okay? But uh, the basic reproduction number for each uh, disease uh, has a direct relationship with some parameters and inverse relationship with other parameters. So that we do, is use the maximum and minimum values to obtain the maximum value for the basic reproduction number and the minimum value for the basic reproduction number. Mm -hmm. The graphical representation of the disease-free equilibrium was done with the minimum values of the parameters to obtain the minimum value for R0. And the endemic equilibrium point was represented with those parameters that led to the maximum value for the basic reproduction number. I don't know if, if you- Yeah, understand. you you tackle it. So like, where do you get the minimum values from? That's what I'm confused about. Where yes. do you get those minimum and maximum values from? 
Yes, uh, from some uh, uh, from some research available in the literature, but uh, some parameters uh, we we don't get data from some specific parameters. I don't remember that. In in those cases, we use uh, parameters associated with other disease, for example, dengue and malaria, okay. and a research of HIV in other countries like. Uh, I don't remember. It, I think it's Mexico, eh, Ecuador, and others. But actually, it was very difficult to get eh, those data. Okay. We have to assume eh, some ranges for some of them. Okay, okay, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, thank you. Thanks yeah. to you, Joseph, for your question. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joanna Rumo, Dr. Rumo. Thank you all for attending this meeting. This is our last meeting in 2023. The next meeting will be held in 2024 next year. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, you for the invitations. Thanks to you for your questions, for your remarks, and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.